sick kids. What time is that? Hello, Captain. <laughs> week number 13. Lucky week number 13 coming up. Yeah. I'm running out of time here. And maybe, I keep, we're both, maybe you'll get really lucky this I time. keep getting close. I catch up to you, and then I fall back again because I get a little cocky, I think. I I think yours was more, a lot more reasonable than mine. I, I There was a couple of games that I, like, it turned out my way, but... As I was watching the games, it was like, oh, my gosh. I, I, I did such a terrible job picking these. And then somehow they still won. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, there was only one game that was a no-brainer, and it turned out exactly as I thought it was. It yeah. was my team. <laughs> oh, that one. You're talk- oh, you were yeah. not talking about a different one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there were a couple of no-brainers, like the Buffalo Saint game I thought was kind of unfolded like I thought it would. Uh yeah, that's true. I didn't think I didn't think the Cincinnati uh, that that Pittsburgh game would, would be that that. Uh, I believe you know. my quote was, "I think Cincinnati is going to womp them." But yeah, you're. You, yeah, you did. <laughs> yep. I didn't think it would be that bad, but I knew it would be that bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. There's so many problems. We could do a whole show on just the Steelers. <laughs> There's so many problems there, and oh, here, yeah. here's the biggest problem. After that complete embarrassment where they showed no heart at all and ex Steelers all over the media are killing them for it. Yeah. They ask Chase Claypool, who I've already had enough of. This guy showed in the offseason he's a knucklehead and now all he does all he cares about is he's like, Hey B, social media, have fun, blah blah blah, look at me. After that great rookie year, this year he's running wrong routes, he's dropping balls in big spots. They ask him, you know, what could be done differently in practice, maybe. And he says, we should play music so we can have more fun. Oh, my gosh. That's, well, Dude, that's it. Cut that's him nutshell. now. I am so tired of these wide receivers. Just Wasn't cut he, him now. I don't care how much he, um, talent. He's a Was bum. he involved with some kind of dirty play? Um, I thought I read No, no. Though. He just he dropped. He ran the wrong route in the first quarter and been through a pick because he didn't go where he was supposed to go. And then on a big third down when the game still – wasn't put away right in the numbers and he drops it wow. this guy i had enough of that dude you know me uh, i hate wide receivers, receivers so they have a very just... small window with me and if they start this kind of garbage broom them broom yeah. their receivers are a dime a dozen i don't care ask the rams <laughs> yeah rams falling apart yeah they bring in that that head case he catches a touchdown pass, then he's running around on the sidelines like he just got shot in the back. He's like, what is it? Beckham is always hurt. And when he's not, he's running his mouth. Like, what good is this guy? Yeah. He's no good. I, 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 wide receivers, man. Wide receivers. So uh, quickly, to bring the audience up to speed. Oh, no, I got these backwards. Hang on. I got to move these in real time. Oh, lordy, lordy. I went 10 and 5. You what? went 11 and 4. I thought that's what I said. Yeah, I just, I had the, oh, you, okay. I had the oh. graphics over the wrong. Oh, I see. Right. <laughs> there, I fixed it. Right. Oh, okay. So um, I, I fell behind another game on you, which is just awful. I'm never going to catch you. Well, there's still, oh, now there's six, there's six weeks left right now. So it's still. I'm five behind with six weeks to go. Yeah. If we were in a pennant race, I'd start to grip the bat a little tighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you're tr- gripping the football a little bit <laughs> tighter, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going to make one of those Carson Wentz shovel pass interceptions pretty soon. So. Yeah. That was um, quite a game, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going into week 13. Yep. And this week there are uh, four teams on a bye. We have the Panthers, the Brownies, who desperately need a week off. Oh, yeah. The Titans, who also desperately need a week off, and the Packers. So, uh, Ooh, yeah, injury-wise, they need it, too. But They do. Still... 
They do. So, you know, Aaron Rodgers with the toe, right? All yep. week long with the toe. He looked pretty good on that bad toe. Just saying. Yeah. And I, I took exception to, um, I forgot, I think it's Joe Buck or whatever, making his little jokes about, about the toe. Uh, his point was about his, ba- again, dredging the whole vaccination thing. Of course. And, oh, I guess he wasn't, uh, he didn't care about. Uh, immunizing, immunizing his toe, or yeah, he took a shot. To, it's like shut yeah, up. Leave it to the like, mainstream media to frick. just get lockstep with the narrative and have to push that. Like, you know, whatever, <sighs> whatever. I, I, I almost knew when Aaron Rodgers was talking about his toe being broken that they were going to somehow tie that. Yeah, somehow to yeah. his COVID vaccine. <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. But one has nothing to do it. with the other. But what? What's that? How has that ever stopped anybody? I, I mean. Know. I saw Fauci on Meet the Press this weekend, and they asked him oh. about, you know, the senators being critical of him and his and all this stuff. And he goes, well, "What about January 6th? What What in the fuck does January sixth have to do with you right. and exactly. and your track record? Like nothing." nothing. And that and, and that's the and that's the first response to someone who's obviously. You know, either outright lying or just wrong. Or in a corner, uh, pinned in a corner. Absolutely. To, yeah, when you try to... And then, in. again, leave it to these fluff cupcake journalists to just go, oh, okay, and move on to the next scripted yeah, question they have. The scripted questions that were scripted by Fauci's yeah. PR people. So just, yeah. just stop. Just stop. I'm so tired of that stuff. I just tune it out now. It's just like, you. I just expect it to happen because it's yeah, so disingenuous. It's just gross. All right. Well, that's enough of that soapboxing. Why don't we move on to the football games? <laughs> yeah. So Thursday night got an interesting one. It's pretty interesting yeah. because both these teams played last Thursday. Last Thursday, and both are in like losing streaks here. So yeah. So we uh, got one of them desperately needs. They eight. both desperately need to to get back, but I don't know. Seven and four Cowboys at the five and six Saints. So. um yeah, Dallas. What happened? Like, I didn't realize that, like, with with everything they had on that offense, so so much firepower that, like, just having one. Well, maybe it's more than one. Um, you know, like CD, like CD Lamb being such a big thing, thing where they lose every single game that he's not there. And I know Amari Cooper's not there as well. Um, and I think they were missing maybe. maybe um, I don't. Well, Elliot's Smith? beat up. And oh right, right. He's hurting. And his, his, their offensive line has never like they they usually don't get the whole offensive line. <laughs> it's exactly. Somebody that's missing, and I know that's a big, big, uh, big piece um, protecting Dak and and the running game. So, uh, but, but their defense that, is getting gashed now too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But they the gave thirty six uh, points to the, to the Raiders in to the Dallas. Raiders. I know. I was. I was. I was very surprised at that. That they. They gave up that much against the Raiders. I was I was trying to figure out what was. I mean, I still saw Parsons in the, in you know constantly putting pressure on, and uh, I think they're secondary though. Maybe they're maybe the secondary starting to look at the headline, you know, read the headlines too much, <laughs> and, uh, and just kind of they got burned a lot. They did, through. yeah. Uh, so they need to get back to to, to what they were doing before. Um, I, I mean, both of these teams are kind of like being you know. Kind of like having a, a lot of problems, but by far the Saints. Uh, I mean, is the, is is Hill? I think the, I think they're are they starting Taysom Hill this week now? Uh, but either way, it's like it's going to be either back, a backup quarterback again for what like the fifth straight game now. Yeah, and, I don't um, know if Kamara is back yet. Uh, yeah, that, that's another one. I don't know if Kamara is back yet either. And I know their offensive line is 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 um is injured as well. Uh, some of them are injured and. I know they still have a good defense, but I don't. I mean, I can't say I, I. I don't see how Dallas could lose, but they obviously could because they've been stumbling around. But uh, I would definitely favor them in this game. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I hate to say it this way, but I think Dallas gets an upgrade this week by not having their coach. Oh, good point. That's a good point. McCarthy's yeah. on COVID protocol, so he's not well, going to be there. Yeah. I think half their coaching staff. Is- yeah, there's eight of them now, I think, right? Eight players and coaches that are out. Yeah. Um, which, you know, it is what it is. We've seen this around the league before. Yeah. And that's another thing. I love when this happens. They act like the, the sky's, oh, my God, the sky's falling. We have a COVID yeah. test on this team. It's like, 
yeah, but this has been going on since last year. Right. And, and, and hey, the Cleveland Browns played a playoff game without their coach and killed the Steelers. That's, yep. So That's true. it happens, right? Um, yeah, I'm with you. I think Dallas just has far more talent on the field right now. Yeah. Despite the their injuries and COVID losses. They're just because that team is just so loaded. Um, uh, it's, uh, you know, I just the way the Cowboys have struggled just looks to me like one of those just those the midseason slump. You know, every team hits a skid at some point in the season for the most part. I mean, you get your 2007 Patriots, your 72 Dolphins, you get those kind of teams once in a while. But for the most part, good football teams, playoff football teams do hit a, a rough spot of three or four games where even if they win, they struggle to do it. And I just think the Cowboys are in that kind of a funk right now, and they're going to bounce right back. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of teams that recently went through that as well. Uh, yeah. that were at the yeah. top of the league. So the Saints, on the other hand, are just they're just shot this year. There's just nothing yeah. left. I mean, they've slowly they remind me a little bit of the Seahawks. They're not as far along as the Seahawks as far as losing pieces. <laughs> yeah, but there are pieces coming off this thing. Uh, left and right, and and Sean Payton's trying to stick his finger in the hole and plug the leak right, everywhere. Right. Just trying to stay afloat. Yeah, yeah. stay afloat, yeah. and it's starting to catch up to him, I think. And they're just they need it. I mean, jury's out on Winston to see if he can actually be a starting quarterback in this league for that team, anyway. Um, so he's going to have to come back next year and try again. Uh, but I, I, Trevor Simeon and and Taysom Hill are no answer. At that position, right. and yeah. without Alvin Kamara and Mark Ingram, <laughs> they're Mark in Ingram. they're in trouble. So, um, as tough as they are at home, and as you know, they're going to run out there and run through a wall for Sean Payton. Um, it's just not going to happen this week. So I got Dallas too. Yep. Next up, the New York Football Giants, four and seven on Sunday at one o'clock on Fox. Take on your five and seven streaking Miami Dolphins. Yeah, unbelievable how they now all of a sudden they're they're playing well when it's like they buried themselves in such a hole. <laughs> uh, what would, this would be like I think five in a row if they won. Jeez. Yeah. Um, and they're home. They're they're doing well. I I watched some of these games and they're doing the things that they were, they were doing that were getting them stuff we like expected from week special one. Special teams like yeah. big plays, defensive big plays, offense mainly conservative short passes but you know not turning the ball over you know keeping it keeping it safe and um yeah and it's been it's been a good formula for them i i wonder where all this was <laughs> earlier in the earlier in the, in the season they could have been in a good position to for a playoff spot if they had won some of those games and i don't know what to do about the giants i mean it looks like they got most of their players back at least i mean barkley's been almost a full season now and we've been waiting for him to get back to his um explosiveness but i don't know i don't know if it's the offensive line that's like preventing them or or daniel jones uh but they say they just every time it looks like they're t taking steps forward they just can't keep it together and keep going they just like i know they won last week but that was one of the games where it's like even though i picked them i'm like oh no they're not winning this game the way it was playing i mean Wow, how did Philadelphia not win that game? Um, I think that I think the Giants got lucky with that one, and it's almost like I'm I'm loath to like you know go with the Dolphins and like jinx them, but I I got to pick the Dolphins in this game. It's funny. I look at these two teams and they're almost winning the same way. In a way, yeah. Like the Giants are winning with defense, keeping the defense, score down yep. and doing yep. just enough when they win to get by, or you know losing in a close one. Um, but it's basically all the defense. Miami, it is. Miami's winning with defense, special teams, and the special same teams, kind of yeah. offense where you get that once in a while they can put together a drive or hit a big play or something like that. Now, that said, Miami seems to hit the big play and put together the drive twice as often as the Giants do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. And well, why, they, they've just why got the it Giants going. Can't... And Tua's looked a hell of a lot better since the Baltimore yeah. game where he was benched and then had to come in. And then came in. Yep. And came in and saved that game. And it almost looked, and I remember I said back then to you, is this the game where, like, he got his confidence? Like, he needed to have that happen in a way? Like, Terry Bradshaw had that happen. Sit the hell down. And then once he got back in, it was lights out from there forward, right? 
Yep. It, it could be the kind of thing where it was kind of they had to wake Tua up a little bit. He was kind of sleepwalking through or playing tentative because of his injuries. Who knows? Who knows? But well, part then, of that was that right around that time with the tra- trade deadline, they were talking about there was all these rumors flying about getting Watson from Houston, and that was over his head too. So. That too. That's a great now, point. Put that in the back. They kept talking about moving on from him before giving him a really a fair yeah. shot, in my opinion. Yeah. So um, it, he he looks a lot more aggressive the last few weeks. Yeah. Um, and and Jalen Waddle starting to emerge as a as a potential superstar. So beside Kasiki, who's just awesome, all world. Um, yeah, we were wondering when he was going to start connecting with Waddle while it started. Yeah, that was a beautiful that slant uh, that hit him right in stride, and he went and yep. took it to the. Yeah, that was beautiful. So that said, um, the Giants are spunky. The Giants will show up to play, but Miami at home. Um, I got to I got to think they got another one in them, and quickly are making it interesting uh, as far as their playoff <laughs> hopes are concerned. So creeping back in. They're creeping back in. <laughs> And they're creeping Just back in force. because everybody else is creeping back yeah. down. So, uh, yeah, it, that might be a fun game to watch. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Interesting one, if nothing else. Next up, the 6-6 six and six Colts travel to Houston to take on the 2-9 and nine Texans, 1 o'clock CBS. Yeah, the Colts really kind of uh, had a chance last week to um, get ahead and get put a lot of pressure on the Titans, and they kind of... I think they kind of they it was their game to lose it, um, the way they were. I I know they were trying to maybe outsmart the whole the fact that the the Bucks are good defense against the run, but I think they moved away from Taylor a little bit too quickly and tried to do too much over there, and that that kind of saves more time for Brady to come back because they got off to a, a lead, and then I don't know. Um, Maybe that was a mistake, even though the Bucks have a good run defense. Maybe that was a mistake to get away from their strength, which is their running game. Uh, and then they, at the end, they they came back with it and and tied it, but just couldn't couldn't win the game. And that that they that was a big opportunity to get close to the Titans that they blew. So he, this game, you know, I don't see any way how they could lose this game, especially Houston uh, losing to the Jets. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think you're right on. I mean, they didn't really use Taylor till the fourth quarter. Yeah. And that's when they mounted their big comeback. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. It, it You know, I, I, I took the Buccaneers in that game, uh, fully expecting them to win. But Yeah, me too. But I was looking in on that one, and it was um, – yeah, you kind of felt – it could have gone either way by the time the yep. fourth quarter came. What happened to me, was shocking to me, was the Colts' defense on that last Tampa Bay drive just rolled. I don't know if they just, rolled over, but they were well physically like <laughs> physically dominated by the Tampa offensive line in London Fournette. Yeah. Just completely ran all over them. So, um, And then Wentz, of course, with the turnover. Yeah. Um, that last throw into the end zone was pitiful. Pitiful. And yeah. you know what? Just looking at it at surface level, I was he, – he threw it to – who was it? Pittman he tried to throw it to? I think it was Pittman. There were four or five bucks in just Pittman. Yeah. And it's like if you're going to throw a Hail Mary to the end zone, put all your guys in one spot. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but why, why – and why throw it to a guy with five Tampa players surrounding him? That means there's probably one on one somewhere else, and you got right. a better shot at a jump ball somewhere else. I don't understand. I did, and again, that's just like fan surface level view, you know, not really knowing what the play was. It just it looked feeble. It looked like a feeble attempt at a, at a last minute win to me. Um, so you know, Wentz did his pedestrian Wentz thing. He wasn't horrible, but he wasn't great. So um, this week, though, going down to Houston, uh, I. The Colts are still, I think, playing really, really well, and I think the Colts will oh, yeah. the ship, and they'll get over five hundred and take another run at this at the Titans before this is all said and done. So yeah, I'm going uh, going with the Colts as well. Next up, the Donny Brook of Donny Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buckle up, football fans. The Vikings at five and six are going up to Detroit. Take on the Detriot Lions. At yeah, this was another game. One. This was another game like the Tampa Bay Colts one, where I picked 
you know, in this game I picked uh, 49ers, but and at the time I was confident. But then when as soon as the game started, I'm like, oh my gosh, Minnesota is like all over. <laughs> they were like really playing well, and it looked like you know they're just gonna run away with it. But you know, I give the 49ers a lot of credit. Just hang in there, and um, you know, force some some mistakes um, by the Vikings, and and came down to that to that last drive where the Vikings couldn't couldn't put it in the end zone to to cut to um tie it, it was this was this was like a really good game i th- i thought that this might have been like the game of the or a game of the week and it turned out to be a very good game yeah um but, oh and and by the way i picked minnesota against detroit because <laughs> how can i not <laughs> i mean i got caught talking about the, the i was so excited about that game and i was like i forgot to tell you what to pick but i mean minnesota just can't afford to lose another and, and against detroit they really got to put this one away yeah, um, I bought. I took Minnesota against the 49ers because I bought fully into, oh, Kirk Cousins Kirk turned Cousins. the corner. The Vikings are hot. This, that, the other. Um, <laughs> well, they still are. They still are. Well, Dalvin Cook now has a torn labor. Oh, right. Which, yeah, that's true. They said he shouldn't miss time, but torn. You know, Baker Mayfield's playing with the same injury right now. And it's just if he falls on that shoulder over and over again, this is that's not going to be good. And he might be fumble prone as a result. Um, somebody hits him on that arm, he gets a jolt of pain, and I think it's the arm he carries the ball in. Am I am I wrong about that? Or is yeah, it the left yeah. arm? I'm not sure. I mean, either way, sometimes you got to cover up or you yeah. switch arms depending on which side you're being pursued from. So if they lose Dalvin Cook, they're probably in trouble. Um, now, this one scares me. Oh, okay. Because they're going up to Detroit, and this looks like it should be a cakewalk. Should be. But this is one of those games I just... That's why. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm taking the Vikings. Everybody's taking the Vikings. But I feel like, and they're looking at the Lions schedule, this, there's like, this might be the only game they can maybe win. And I, it, it just feels like one of those where they could just surprise you out of nowhere, Detroit. And come yeah. up with one. Um, and, you know, Cousins threw a pick for the first time in a while last week. He's still only got three on the year. You know, I'm waiting for that game where he just comes apart and throws three or four interceptions. It's coming. There's going to be one of those. Is this the one? I don't know. It's just creepy to me. It just feels like Detroit just, you know, they're laying in the weeds. They're, you don't think they should probably <laughs> win one, right? They're going to win one? It does look like a setup for some big surprise, but after watching that, and I did watch some of that, the the, the Lions playing the Bears last thing, I'm like, oh, I, was I, I don't see I what's left in the, in the tank for the Lions here. I don't know if they're capable of springing a trap here. I, I don't know. know. I, mean, I know. I know what you're saying. But, but that's why I'm taking the Vikings. Right. I don't believe in Detroit at all, but I just feel like one of these weeks we're going to yeah. be like, like the Jaguars did to Buffalo. We're going to be right. like, what that's true. the yeah. hell happened here? It, it, it's that's why they play the games, you know, any given Sunday, all those stupid cliches. I think it'll, if it does, it'll have to be exactly what you said, where Cousins just goes off kilter and throws three or four interceptions because that, that's the only way that Detroit's going to win. That I can, the unforced errors. And again, Dalvin Cook, what if he starts fumbling the ball? Yeah. I mean, you just don't know. I mean, this could be a recipe for, it's the Vikings after all. <laughs> the Vikings the, experience. There's one thing we've learned about the Vikings in the last two or three years is that they will subvert your expectations on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keeps it exciting, though. It does. So. It does. <laughs> Speaking of exciting, 1 o'clock well, well, CBS, the 5-7 and seven Eagles travel to the 3-8 and eight New York Jets. Yeah, talk about, like, uh, uninspiring game with that Eagles and the Giants last week. Oh, my gosh. Now we I mean, get another good, one. <laughs> it was a good defensive game, but geez, can you can you can any any receiver just catch a ball in that game? I went with uh, the Eagles too. How about that ball that went right through Rager's hands? Yeah, twice. I mean, at the yeah, end two zone, two different one in the in, one. Yeah, the one at the I end mean, he, in the end zone. It went right in through the end zone. Hands. Yeah, in the end, right, yeah. right, right when they could have just put the game away right there. Right. I, and I know he had a, a similar play earlier that was a harder catch, but still catch a ball and yeah, didn't do it. And it's like. They have a serious uh, receiver problem there. I mean, I know they have a good dynamic running game, especially with um, uh, the quarterback running. Um, Hurts, yeah. Hurts. Uh, you know, if they could ever get their passing game, you know, in order, they could really uh, do some damage. Um, 
and it's hard to tell whether their defense is really good or not. It was against the, I don't know. Uh, so, I mean, I, I see them definitely winning this game against the Jets. I know the Jets beat Houston last week, but I didn't see anything kind of spectacular or anything that gave me any kind of notion that they're going to keep going. So we'll see. Uh, it, it is going to be, I, I think this is going to be a, like a, one of those crazy games too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the one thing the Jets showed me last week was they came from behind. That's true. Yep. Um, they, they, they didn't look very good uh, in the first half. And I was sitting there. Uh, I was at my friend Doug's watching the Steelers game. And, of course, I was just banging on Wilson. I'm like, this yeah. dude's a bust. This dude's a bust. It's got all the earmarks of yet another <laughs> bad Jet draft pick written all over. And And then they proved me wrong. So... Um, the weird part here too, is that the Eagles are in the, in the Meadowlands for the second straight week. Oh yeah. That's Good pretty point. interesting. It wasn't like they got one of these games against the New York teams at That's home. Right. They played both of these New York teams on the road. Um, so I don't know. Is that considered a road game when you play in a road stadium two weeks in a row? Maybe not. Hmm. I don't know. Weird. Um, I'm taking the jets in this one. Oh, okay. For the simple fact that it, I think. They're starting to feel it. Really? I think they're Maybe starting I didn't see enough of that to game bring it week. together a little bit. They're getting their running game moving forward. I mean, at least last week against Houston, they got it moving a little bit. Um, they just look to me like they've got a little bit, like they've gotten over that hump of we're, we're, we're going to lose. We're going to lose. We're going to lose. And that's winning two of the last three maybe has inspired them a little bit. Are they a great team? No. Are they a good yeah. team? No. I just feel like, I don't know. I just have a feeling. I mean, there's no other way to put it. I don't have any other statistical, in, you know, facts behind my pick. I just feel like they're going to somehow squeak by the Eagles in this one. And I, I see it as more like a 27-24, hmm. 24-22, like... I, I just I, I just feel it. I just feel like and I feel like Wilson is due to have a good game. He's yet to have a good game. He's had average That's games. True. He's had yeah. horrible games. Horrible, yeah. I, I just I don't know. I, I just feel like the Jets are on some kind of a little roll almost like what I said with Dallas going into that mid season slump. I feel like the Jets have a little little mid season mini winning streak going here. <laughs> so I can say two in a row for New York. Why not? I got to catch you well, somehow. Hey, if um, if the Jets can have a chance to show us something from here the rest of the year, win a couple of games, and they'll they'll give their fans some hope that um, there is kind of like a a path forward, uh, and and make sure that as long as Wilson stays on the you know stays on the field for all the rest of these games, shows showing progress. We'll and, see. and actually, it's funny because after looking at what the Jets did. Last week, this past week, and looking at what the Steelers are becoming, <laughs> I almost feel like, and it might happen, and I'm going to wait one more week before I actually say it, but I bet the Jets end up with a better record than Steelers. Really? Wow. Yeah. Better coaching. And that's why Miami's on their roll, because they have a great coaching staff. Great coaching staff. And, you know, the the to me, the biggest earmark of Miami's success in coaching is that when they were 1-7, that team did not quit on – Brian Flores, they did not. Uh, uh, that that is a great point. Uh, that is a, a really good point. Which shows yeah, that, that they have yeah. all bought in, they're all aboard, and they were willing to work with him to fix it, and they've fixed it. In yep. Pittsburgh, that, that was yeah. You have they the were perfectly opposite. set up to fall apart there, but you're right. Yep. In Pittsburgh, you have a team that quits on their coaching, quits, I flat out quit, flat out quit, and that's not the first time this year they've been accused of it either. Hmm. Next up, the 9-2 and two Arizona Cardinals travel to Chicago to take on the Bars at uh, 1 p.m. on Fox. Yeah, nothing seems to be, you know, slowing these Cardinals too much, you know, injuries or anything like that. Just They just keep going. Um, <laughs> and now, you know, they, like I, you know, like we discussed, they did the smart thing. They let Kyler Murray stay out for a few weeks through the bye, and um, hopefully that'll mean that he's uh, fully recovered and they can continue on. And the Bears, I mean, uh, same thing as what I said about Detroit. that game last Thanksgiving. I, I was just both sides. I, I didn't see anything. Um, and now I know they have, I believe they have fields out uh, as well. Um, so 
I don't see how Arizona is going to have any problems beating the Bears this week. <laughs> uh, there's nothing for me to say. Yeah, uh, you, you, <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> no, you hit. You, can, you, you hit. Can pick the Bears. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. They, they, you hit it right on the head. I mean, and they did. They must have. You know what? I think we have another audience member. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, Oh my god! I just drew a blank. The Cardinals coach. Um, oh, um, what the heck? Just drew a complete blank. Oh my gosh! Uh, this is what happens I, when I you do things tired. Um, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's probably watching because he listened to you say, uh, "I would <laughs> rest Kyler Murray through the bye," and they did. And they didn't sacrifice a game either. They still wound up winning that game. They won the game. So, uh, yeah, yes. meanwhile, on the flip side, Chicago, Andy Dalton, what else needs to be said? They're a mess. They need to get they need to get rid of their coaching staff and, and start anew because there's a lot of talent yeah. on that team. And I, think, I think that will happen, actually. Talk about severely underachieving. And apparently Nagy's calling the offensive plays again, and that explains why they can't get out of their own way all of a sudden again. Jeez. Well, what is with that dude? I mean, he's probably just asking for his pink slip at this point. I, was he know. was he like jealous that they were they 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 did kind of like had a lot of positives going on a couple and right. it's like, oh no, I gotta take credit for this. <laughs> Let me get back to it. <laughs> That's right. it. I mean, my God. If we're gonna fail, I'm gonna make sure I'm right there at the center of the fail. <laughs> yeah, like I said, he's looking for that pink slip. He just wants to get out. So yeah, Cardinals. Next up, uh six and five Chargers travel to Cincinnati to play the Red Hot Bengals, 7-4, and four, 1 o'clock CBS. Yeah, I never thought I'd get to the point in this season after watching how the, char- the Chargers charged out of the gate, <laughs> if I may say, that they would be in a position to just fall to 500. But here I am picking Cincinnati because they're having so much trouble. Um, I mean, their defense, has, has, I don't think, has played well all all, all season long, but now they're somehow the the defensive game plans of of, of these teams are figuring this out with Herbert. I, and I and I've seen this a lot from not just against the Chargers, but against the Cowboys and um, against some other, you know the Rams with the the two deep safeties um, giving them you know the the short passing or the the short yardage, um, and it's it's been it's been kind of frustrating, Herbert. I mean even even the game against Pittsburgh, which I know the Chargers won, but he wound up like running a, a lot in that because they gave they gave him some of that field. So I, I don't know. I'm I'm going to pick Cincinnati. I, I obviously it, not obviously. I think it's kind of like a back you know might be a pick 'em kind of game. The Chargers could easily win this game, but the way Cincinnati's playing with their defense and and the many trouble so much trouble that the Chargers are having on offense, I'm going to go with Cincinnati here. Yeah. Um... Boy, the Chargers, uh, you know, I, I think you said it really well that we got caught up in the way they charged out of the gate. <laughs> uh, because of last year, they had those constant breakdowns in the late fourth quarter. It looked like this is a much better team than there. And, and he was a rookie and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We expected them to be much better in it this year. You bring in the new coach with Staley and you, you kind of reboot the whole thing. And he was playing MVP level football for five or oh, six yeah. weeks. He looks very average all of a sudden, and I think you're right. I mean, he's he's having trouble with coverages. Um, the sophomore slump. I mean, you got to expect that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I just think that maybe we thought they were there. We thought they were a year ahead of where they actually are, and it might be next year when they become like a serious contender for the division. This year, they're just like a, a fringe playoff team. Is what it's starting yeah, to play out as. I mean, they're like, a win yeah. one, lose one kind of team. They're just not able to put anything together consistently. In the, and that's going to take time. It's going to take time. On the flip side, Cincinnati, this is the third year now with uh, Zach Taylor as the coach. They've completely turned this whole thing around. Uh, that was quick. That was quick. Oh, yeah. A team that yeah. was as bad as they were, uh, one of the worst teams, if not, not the worst team in football, and flipped it in three years into a serious contender. Um, Joe Burrow said this week, uh, and this is where their mindset is at. He's, you know, they asked him about what it was like to beat the Steelers or sweep the Steelers. And he said, this, we don't care about beating those guys. Who cares? This is about 
the playoffs. This is about bigger things. Uh, wow. Yeah. So they completely disregarded the fact that they've been, you know, bullied by the Steelers for two decades and have put that in their rearview mirror. They don't even care. They have much bigger, loftier goals, and that, that's a sign of a, a really good team. So that's very mature, yeah. Very yeah. mature. And and as we know, Joe Burrow's won he's won the national championship in college. He's he knows what it takes to to win these kind of things. So um yeah, Bengals at home for me too. And I think we're seeing something pretty remarkable uh, take place. And you know, you can do that in the NFL. You can turn your fortunes oh, around yeah. in two yep, years. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you make the right moves. And they've clearly not only made the right moves personnel wise, but they've made the right moves up here. Because like you said, that mentality to be thinking that way. Who cares about the Steelers and who cares that we lost twenty games in a row to them? That that's irrelevant. They're just yeah. they're just another yeah. opponent in our way to get to where we want right. to go. You know, where a lot of teams for some teams, I'm thinking maybe the Browns, by beating the Steelers like that would be their Super oh, Bowl. Yeah. That would We've be their Super it, yeah. Bowl, right? Yeah. We finally vanquished the, the Steelers, and then they would let down and get you know, run over by other teams. Um, Cincinnati's got their eye on the prize, and I think that's really uh, commendable. So, Yeah, and I think you said it really well. Actually, these two teams are very similar, but Cincinnati's like a year ahead. I mean, yeah. I see them, the Chargers being just like them, but they need to get their defense a little bit better like Cincinnati has and, and a, like a better running game. So and, you, and, can't, you, you have that quarterback. You can't just put everything on top of them. Which is clearly what they're doing. And, yeah. and, and you're right. And, and to get that mentality, to get that this, the, you know, a championship or bust, you know, everything else is a failure. And right now it looks like the Chargers are like too worried about catching the Chiefs or, or you know, uh, it just uh, it doesn't seem like you're right. They're yeah. about a year yeah. behind where the Bengals are. Um, yeah, Cincinnati, well, quite a good story. And, you know, it, it's fun to watch teams like who have just been been the whipping boy of the league for, for 20 years, you know, have a little success. So it's good for the league when you see different helmets. Oh, it definitely is, yeah. At the end of the year, right? So next up, Tom Brady and the 8-3 and three Bucks travel to Atlanta to take on Matt Ryan and the 5-6 and six Falcons in the rematch of the 28-3 to three game. Oh. Well, not exactly, but well, a rematch for Tom, <laughs> for Tom and yeah. Gronk. Oh, that's true, and Gronk. All right, we talked about how the Bucks ha- ha- uh, were, were, you know, very resilient against the Colts. The Colts were just the, the probably the hottest team uh, up until last week, and I mean, you could see a potential letdown after that game, but I don't, I don't think Tom was going to. Uh, or the rest of the team are, are going to let that happen against Atlanta. I mean, they they smell the fact that they can now they're within, you know, they 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 can still make that number one seed and and that clearly what they want to put themselves in a driver's seat. And I don't think they're going to let down against Atlanta, who who has had who's had has had like a up and down year, mainly down. But they've seen you, you've seen the, you know flashes of of their offense, but it's not enough. Yep, yep. Um, we saw Tampa Bay up until about this time last year, middling around. Uh, let's see, they were, I oh, we got it right here. One, two, three, oh, four, yeah, five, six. Yeah. They were seven and five at this point yep. last year. Yep. Seven and five. Um, and then they didn't lose again. And I'm kind of getting the same vibe. I, I, I feel like the three losses are more than anybody thought they would have. When you looked at their schedule at the beginning of the year, there was questions that could they run the table. Right. They're right. like, okay, maybe they lose to the Rams. There was like two games they could potentially lose, but no, I didn't. And I know a lot of people didn't have them having more than two losses. They got three. I feel like this is the time of year, and Brady's been through these wars of attrition how many times. They put their foot down. They put their foot on the gas, um, and they're just going to – they're going to – be no nonsense the rest of the way. If they lose, they're going to have to be outright beaten. They will not make any mistakes, and they will not, as you said, have a letdown game. They're just too experienced to have that happen. So yeah, I uh, remember last year that that game against the Chiefs. That was the, that last one. Kind of ironic then that they they kind of just met up against in the Super Bowl and easily won. But yeah, I I, I honestly last year didn't think they were going to go very far after you know, like, as you said, they were kind of like just hanging around but yeah uh this may be the start of it, of it again 
Yeah, I kind of feel, I get that feeling, and they're not going to go in there and take the Falcons lightly. I think they're going to just take care of business and uh, move on to their next opponent. So Tampa Bay on the road. Next up, the Washington football team, now at 5-6 and six, without Chase Young, travel to Vegas <laughs> to take on the 6-5 and five Raiders, 4.05 p.m. Fox. Yeah, and they their defense has, I think you mentioned this before, their defense has uh, been a lot better without him. That's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> uh, I mean, I know last week it was against the Seahawks, which we're not going to uh, say too many uh, great things about how their offense is doing. But still, um, that was that was a good game. Um, and they, they lost their – I, was it? Oh, was it at the beginning of that game that they lost their? I know they lost their kicker at some point, but oh, was that, <laughs> that was. Uh, it was after the 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 extra point got blocked. Oh, okay. I think that was in the must, second quarter. It was like okay. toward the end of the second, just before half. Oh, all right. All the right. kick got blocked. He was chasing down the 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 guy from Seattle who not he blocked. He recovered and he scored the touchdown. And he scored a, and a hat trick in one play. Um, and pulled his hamstring, chasing him down. Like, what are you doing? You're not going to yeah, catch him. And even doing? if you do, what are you going to do? Bounce off of him? You're a kicker. So, yeah. Just let him go. Yeah. I mean, it almost cost them the game because now they're like, you know, they're going forward on fourth down by the by the goal line when they could have sealed the game and didn't make it. And um, it was, it made, it certainly made for an exciting game, but it's, it was, I don't know, it almost cost it to them. Forcing yeah. to go for two point conversions all the, you know, all the time. I mean, they only had, couple of touchdowns but still um and that was a different I, I don't know what's going on with the seahawks but um and and the game with the raiders just put 36 on the cowboys which does this mean the raiders are like you know <laughs> bucking the trend of from last year where they kind of just you know faltered away um i don't know i i want to give them another chance and i and, and i'm picking them here in this game at home uh, thinking that they, they somehow found something where they kind of found their footing at, uh, on offense again, and and I, I think they're going to do enough to to beat Washington, uh, despite you know uh, Heineke's hero- heroics. <laughs> Heineke's a he's a gamer. Yeah, um, you know, and and it's funny because they Gibson just killed it last week. I think thirteen carries oh, over yeah. hundred yards, but then they get down to the end zone and give it to McKissick, <laughs> who's that a good was, back that, in his own. That right. was weird. Yeah. <laughs> They, you know, some teams do that, you know. Um, yeah, uh, the problem with Washington is I've put them in the same bucket with the Giants and with your team um, where they play solid defense and they can score just enough to, to win or hang in. And it's like they don't have a really – I mean, as well as Heineke's playing – and as good as a lot of their offensive weapons are, they don't seem to be able to put a lot of points on the board. Right. Washington. Right. That's true. Yeah. Um, they, you know, who knows? Maybe they'll prove me wrong this week, but they're going up to Vegas or across to Vegas or down to Vegas or somewhere. They're going to Vegas. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I know they have a nice little streak going, but mm, I'm going to have to give this one to the Raiders too. But I'm not buying into the Raiders are bucking the trend from last year because, okay, because <laughs> let's wait a little bit. On yeah, that. I agree. <laughs> so, but yeah, they, I agree. I agree with your assessment of Washington. They, I mean, they held the ball for more than like two, like forty minutes last last week and barely got by that game. You know, almost Seattle almost tied it. So it's like, yeah, they they hold on to the ball a lot. They get their ten yards per you know. Th- four downs but you know, again not a lot of points like you said yeah full confession early third quarter i it was over well i woke yeah. up and it was over i was like huh <laughs> who won yeah. it was a lot of that like, boring very game trudging, yeah boring boring football game and it was sad listening to the announcers on espn trying to pump it up like it was a, <laughs> a great game Next up, yeah. CBS 425, the Baltimore Ravens at 8-3 and three, travel to Pittsburgh to take on the 5-5-1 five, five, and one Steelers. I don't know about Baltimore. I mean, I'm going to pick them in this game because the Steelers are having so much trouble against a lot of teams, but watching Baltimore, their offense is so, like, not right. 
Um, they seem to be playing a lot like Washington, where they seem to hold on to the ball a lot, but, you know, the points aren't there. I don't know what's going on, you know, having trouble down by the goal line, you know, turning the ball over. Um, I don't know. Um, the passing game isn't very consistent. And um, obviously a lot of a lot of defenses are catching up to watching, you know, anticipating him, you know, Jackson running. So um, I don't know. It, this will be an interesting game for me. I, I know, you know, I know you're down on the Steelers, but it's like watching Baltimore just barely getting by these games. Uh, it worries me for them uh, in the you know, in the playoffs. Yeah, uh, looking ahead to the playoffs, I'd agree with you with with the Ravens. Um, but trust me, the Steelers are hot garbage. <laughs> I, you know, okay. For some reason, you haven't believed me all year, and I will make you believe they are hot trash. Um, <laughs> I think Baltimore beats the living snot out of them this mm. week. Uh, this would be the game where if like Baltimore doesn't have like a really solid, you know, t- 10 to 20 point win, it'll give me even really seriously worried about them. <laughs> well, the biggest problem with the Steelers right now is their defense is terrible. And Watt is out because he's on the COVID list. Um, I mean, he might get one of those last minute reprieves on Saturday if he tests negative or whatever. But yeah. for all t- intents and purposes, he's not playing. There is zero depth on this team, which means you're going to be playing with Taco Charlton, who was just brought up from the taxi squad two weeks ago, and or Buddy Johnson, who will be brought up from the taxi squad this week. Um, they're 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 a mess. They're thin everywhere, and they their offensive line is. A disaster, as we know. But Roethlisberger's what he is. They're 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 just their their defense has gone from the fifth ranked defense against the run to the thirty first. Wow! They've given up seven hundred yards of offense in the last what three games, four games. Wow. They're and in trouble. Baltimore loves the Baltimore loves the running game, so. and Baltimore can run the ball no matter who's toting the rock. Um, that said, now the Steelers have always done well against Jackson because they keep him in the pocket. They don't yep, let him get yep, outside. Yep. If he gets outside, he's gone. Um, but uh, even if they, they can hold the score down in the first half, chances are they're going to run out of gas and get smoked in the second half. So uh, I got the Ravens. Next up, San Francisco 6-5 and five at the 3-8 and eight Seattle boring-ass Seahawks. CBS yeah, what the 425. Heck? I mean, it's hard for me to say, but that Seattle offense was better with Geno Smith <laughs> than when Russ comes back. And and we could say you know maybe they rushed him back with the in- injury and that's the but geez, I don't know but I see I see this especially from this last game I saw a little probably saw a little bit more of it than than you or than I should have but um, I see a lot of like missed reads by him like more than a physical thing I some missed you know open receivers or just the passes are a little bit. Oh, but I, I don't know what's going on. Um, could the physical injury be affecting him mental, mental? I don't know. But and and one of the we I keep expecting one of these times that Seattle will finally like pull something, uh, make get get a, a major win when they're not supposed to have supposed to. But I don't know. It could be this week. But I I have to go with the 49ers. Yes, um, I've been saying it week after week that the 49ers rely a little heavily on Debo Samuel. And, he, and he has, he's injured now too, right? Yeah, he is yeah. injured now, but uh, he'll play, right? I mean, he's playing this week, as far as I know. Uh, is he? I think so, but I think I he has to back. because now, um, you know, it's funny how the NFL is like a copycat league. So you go back to the Falcons, right? The Falcons took a guy named Cordell Patterson off the scrap heap that New England whiffed on, that the Bears whiffed on, like, and they they he's a wide receiver that they use as a tailback. Yep. They or or anywhere. He's a Swiss army knife. They'll put him anywhere, right? They'll put him in the slot, they'll break him out wide, they'll use him in the backfield, wherever. And he's a, and he's a potent weapon. Well, the 49ers have clearly gone, "Hey, we got a guy built like that." <laughs> yep. <laughs> His name's Debo Samuel. He can do anything. And they're starting to now they're lining him up at tailback or breaking him out wide or you know wherever it is. So, he's become like their entire offense. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's which true. is really weird. But right now it's working and I think it'll work. It'll work for them in the short term. I mean, clearly, I mean, these coaches are smart. They're going to get a few games worth of film. They're going to figure it out and they're going to shut it down. Um, but until they do, uh, I think it's going to keep working for them. And you flip it over to the other side. The Seahawks have just. 
they're a shell of their former self. So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. their defense played well against Washington, but again, I mean, Washington, Washington is still figuring things out with a first year quarterback. Yep. And the Seahawks have no running game. I, I don't know. Seahawks don't have much. I, I, I've said it before and it's actually I, one of those shows, those talking head shows uh, might have been the NFL. Uh, Good morning football. They said, is it time to uh, to start the eulogy for this for, for the Seahawks run? For this run, yeah. And which is kind of what I said last week. I said, which this is whole exactly run is said. over. Yep. This whole yep. run is over. Going back to Mike Holmgren. Um, there's a massive rebuild on the way in Seattle. And uh, it starts with trading Russ. They should trade Russ and get something back for him. I agree. Yep. Well, he still has some value. Well, yep. he has value. So, yep. Uh, 49ers this week. Next up. The 6-5 and five Denver Broncos travel to Arrowhead to play the Chiefs on the Sunday night football game on NBC. Yeah, the Broncos are kind of this weird team that, um, you know, never really ha- hasn't, haven't really lived up to the expectations, but then they have this, these crazy games where they, they, <laughs> they uh, you know, beat up on, on a team they shouldn't. Like like when they beat the Cowboys by right. thirty points, um, and then last week, last week I, 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 I know that. you called it, yep. you called it perfectly, and and I thought it was that that they had a chance against each other, but not not just kind of like beat them up like that, um, uh, and they, that was a good game for them. But now they're going <laughs> into Kansas City. Kansas City seems to have figured out at least some somewhat, maybe not completely, their issues on offense. But you know, at home after the bye, I, I think they'll they'll have enough to, to beat the Broncos. I don't think the Broncos are going to have one of those, you know, great games this week. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, the the Broncos, well, let's face it, they're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Do I think Bridgewater is the answer? Probably not. But he's a good, I think he's a good placeholder until they finally get the guy they want. And I think a that's going to have to be through free agency or a trade. <laughs> Because when you finish 500 or better, you get a low round pick. Yeah. Yeah. Unless they trade up or something. But Teddy's playing well, but I don't see him being the franchise face uh, two years from now. Um, They still have a quarterback issue, especially they got so much talent at wide receiver on that team. And with Noah Font at tight end, and they've got the two great backs in Williams and uh, Gordon. I mean, the team is loaded offensively, and their defense is solid too. Patrick Sertain. Is looking every bit. It's his father. Yep. Um, so that said, they're going into Arrowhead, where the Chiefs. I don't want to go crazy on the Chiefs yet. I know they've won a couple right. in a row, and they look like they fixed their problems. I want to see it one or two more times before I'm a believer in the Chiefs, because um, they just looked really haphazard up until a few weeks ago. But they're home, which is a horribly tough place to play. And the Broncos, as good as they are, they're one of these teams. Who did I say it about? Uh, the Chargers. They're a win one, lose one team. Yeah. I, I don't see them putting a streak together. So I've got the Chiefs at home as well, which saves the best for last. My so wait, goodness. are you saying that Teddy is a good bridge to the next? <laughs> Stand up, Bob. <laughs> wow, look at you. <laughs> And before you get to the what I believe is going to be probably the you no know, what I think is going to be the game of the week, did you cover Jaguars at Rams in the Sunday in this Sunday slate? Oh shit! Did I skip over that? I don't remember. Thank you. You always call me out. I, yeah, I did. No, miss, I, just wanted, I did I mean, miss that game. Sorry, gang. Let's backpedal to four oh five on Sunday on Fox. Well, at least it's an afternoon game. That's what we're the two and nine Jacksonville Jaguars travel to L A to play the Rams. Which I mean, we I guess we kind of skipped it, but the Rams are having so many issues. Um, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes, they are. With the, they they thought they were like adding these great pieces that would like kind of find, kind of put them over the top where they have a, a serious run to the Super Bowl. But I think it was Troy Aikman that that mentioned it this week. It was like having an All Star type team isn't very a way to success. <laughs> Because they're all all these individual ones that want the attention, and they're not really team players. And we've seen the Rams kind of you know stumble around the last few weeks. I don't think they're going to lose to Jacksonville, but then again, it wouldn't be a, a shocker to me if they did. 
but I'll I'll pick the Rams, obviously. Yeah, the Rams are lucky this game came up on their schedule. They might be in free fall, yeah. which they already kind of are in free fall. Yeah. I mean, three-game losing streak and looking bad doing it. Um, yeah, I, there's a couple of things here. Troy Aikman, I heard him say that, and I was like, thank you, Troy, for reinforcing <laughs> what schlubby me has been saying. You said uh, that before, yeah. I've been saying it since the – yeah, I mean – it's we've seen it how many times with the Yankees or the Mets or the Red Sox. You you bring in all these marquee players, but they all have immense egos. Yeah, the universe revolves around them, and <laughs> the Rams were on autopilot. They looked so good until they brought in Von Miller, who I don't think is a problem. I like Von Miller. I think he's a no, stand up guy. They just didn't need him. It just it creates defensive rotations they didn't probably need to do. Right, right. And, and then you have uh, OBJ, who I don't. I mean, how many times do I got to talk about that knucklehead? I, I why people think he's any good is beyond me. He's built an entire legacy off a couple of one-handed catches when he was a rookie with the Giants. Like he's done nothing except cause yep. problems. He's never plays because he's hurt all the time. His statistics are not good. His statistics over like three years don't don't you, 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 say what you want about Antonio Brown, but his last year with Pittsburgh, one year with the Steelers are better than three years combined from OBJ. Yeah. So like, uh, enough with this guy. He catches one touchdown Sunday and then walks off the field. Oh my bad, he can't walk. Right. It's just enough. Uh, I agree with Troy Aikman, and we've been saying it. It's subtraction by addition. You just, I think they ruin their chemistry, and yeah. I was rooting for the Rams until they pulled this nonsense, and now I want them to lose because I hate teams that think they can buy their way in. I agree. Yeah. I, I hate that. I ha It really bothers me. So, uh, you know what? If you think you're that clever and you want to go and throw the kitchen sink at this whole thing, you deserve what you get. And, and combine that with Matthew Stafford's lack of playoff experience, and now we're coming down the stretch. They're stumbling around, and so is he. He looks, com he looks terrible. He looks as he bad as Jared Goff. It almost looks like they haven't swapped out any. It was a one for one swap. They're both bad. Um, now Stafford's far more talented in raw talent, but but that doesn't mean this is this is is all there. So um, they're lucky. They're lucky they got the Jags this week because they're gonna feel good about what happens. They're gonna think they fixed it. Whether they have or not remains to be seen. But uh, Rams at home with an easy win. So. Yeah, you're you're right about Stafford. I think it's a mental, mostly a mental thing. It's like one of these losses really got to him, and it started snowballing. And he now he's like just instead of going through his progression, his his reads, he's like just get trying to get rid of the ball way too quick, and you know, and it's it's off. It's like he's off, and then you know, I don't know. Uh, he, maybe they'll be lucky, and this game will be like one of those games where he kind of gets back on on track. I don't know. But yeah, that's right. that's what I mean. You know, they get the cupcake opponent. Not that Jack, right. no NFL team's a cupcake, but right. No, I know comparatively. Yeah. Um, then again, the Jags went up and beat Buffalo in Buffalo. Yep. Uh, but back to Stafford, really quick too. I, watching that game, he got away with a couple. He almost threw two pick sixes in a row. <laughs> yeah. Like back to back yeah. plays. Yeah. Like yeah. He's when you see that, um, that's like Sam Darnold, icy ghosts level stuff. Yep. yep. So. Um, I, I I really see the chink in Stafford's armor, and it was the, the people were saying that when they were seven and one. Like, let's see what happens in the second half of the year when he's going to be relied on to get them down the stretch and into the playoffs. And, and you know, we're a place he's never been before, and I think that pre he's feeling that pressure. So um, I don't know. And where's where's his chemistry with Cooper Cup? That's been gone. That's been gone, yeah. That's been gone. I mean, granted, a lot of times the defenses will take that away from you. Maybe that's why they felt the need to bring in OBJ. I mean, well, because of Woods, they need to Woods that. going down. But yeah, I, I know. know, but they have other other players. And they've completely abandoned their running game. That's completely that's abandoned their running game. And to you know, to throw uh, props at uh, Chris Berman, who brought this up on Sunday, that uh, just two years ago when they were in the Super Bowl, the boring Super Bowl with the Patriots. To, they ran all year long with Todd Gurley until he got hurt. Clearly, and that, uh, and yeah, right. Which, which, but that—that's the team they were just two years ago, and now it seems they seem completely reluctant to hand the ball to anybody. They just want to throw on every down. I don't know. We'll see. All right, now thank you for point catching me. That's like the third or fourth time this year I've missed a game. Yeah, 
I got the list here, but it's all small, and I just <laughs> clicked the wrong one. Um, wow, the game of the week, the game of the month, and it's only the first week of the month. Yeah, and they, <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know who to pick. Give give the give the schedule makers a, a, a props for doing this game at on this late, uh, which become be, has become such a marquee game. Uh, the Patriots now we've talked about Belichick and his plan that works perfectly. Now they're in first first place and now what almost like the the number one seed too. <laughs> yeah, they're half happen? game out. <laughs> How did this happen? Uh, I I think this is. We're seeing something we're never probably going to see again in Bill Belichick. And love or hate the Patriots, you have to tip your cap at what's gone on here. I mean, you can say, okay, um, he got lucky with Brady and Brady and Gronk and all those guys carried him, you know, because last year the team fell apart. But last year he was missing six of his starters. Yeah, yeah. And he had to bring in Cam Newton, who did not fit their system at all. To try to make it work. Right. And in one year has turned it completely back around again. Yep. Yep. What else can you say? You gotta tip your uh, cap. Yeah, I, I yeah. And I think it's gonna be interesting the next few few years whether it's this he had become so he became so successful this year, like sneaking you know, taking you know, where people didn't see them coming. Is this gonna be able to is he gonna be able to sustain this, you know, for you know, the next four or five years? But that's that's not this year. We're talking about this year. And that being said, all about the Patriots, I'm still going to go with Buffalo here at home. Uh, and I think, and I think, I don't know if it's, he's going to do it or not. But Josh Allen, he's going to be, he's been much more up and down than he thought than I thought would happen this year. And I think if the Buff, if Buffalo's going to win, he's definitely going to have to be the difference because these two teams are very similar. Um, uh, the Patriots defense, I think, are a little bit better than the Buffalo defense, but uh, Josh Allen is, 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 you know, obviously more experienced and, and a little bit better than, than you know, Mac. I mean, Mac Jones is just a rookie, so, um, so that I think he'll be the difference in this. Not that it's going to be that I think it's going to be a blow blowout game or anything like that. I, I think it'll be very close, but I think Buffalo will will squeak it out. I got a little stat for you: the Patriots are on oh. a six-game winning streak. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> In the six-game winning streak, they have outscored their opponents by 148 points. Wow. Which averages to 24.6. That is amazing. I didn't even realize that. Jeez. That's on, that's astounding. Coming from an offense that looks kind of pedestrian. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mac Jones isn't putting up 300-yard games every week. Nope. He did this past week, but the week before, I think he was like 190 with three touchdowns. They are winning. They're winning the Bill Belichick way. Remember last week I said the two they the two thousand one thing, and it just yes, yep. it totally looks like that. Their defense is suffocating. They turn over the ball. They turn. They cause turnovers left and right. They're a turnover machine, which is why I agree that their defense is slightly better than the Bills because the turnovers they have. Yep. I think they're a little better at causing turnovers. Um, yeah, they are. Now it comes down to the two offenses, which are both. Right now, just crushing it. Um, you know, uh, very balanced on both sides. Very yeah. balanced on both sides. I mean, the Patriots have the running game going, and Mac Jones to Hunter Henry is just become it's it's Brady to Gronk, right? Buffalo gets their offense from all over the place. I mean, yeah. remember last year? Um, oh God, bad with the names today. The guy they got from Minnesota. The receiver, oh, yeah, uh, Diggs, Diggs. Stefan yeah. Diggs Stephon was Diggs. basically the main weapon. This year doesn't seem so much. He seems no, to be I spreading know. it out a lot. Um, you know, he's got Knox at tight end. He's got Beasley. He's just he's spreading it around a little bit more. It seems he's got Emmanuel Sanders this year. Um, so it, to me, it comes down to you're right. I mean, it comes down to Josh Allen. It, and if the Bills are going to hold on to their reputation is who they are. If they're going to win this division and they're going to be a championship caliber team, this is the game at home. They have to make a statement because if they mess up here, I think they're in big trouble. Oh yeah. Yep. So I am also going to take the bills at home. This is going to be 
I get your popcorn. I'm going to have my popcorn. I cannot wait to watch this game. <laughs> I think it's going to be really, really awesome. You got to wait all the way to Monday. Got to wait all the way to Monday. But hey, you know what? They save the best for last. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> it, it, interestingly enough, and here's the Patriots schedule uh, for the next month. So they have the Bills this week. Then they have their bye week. Then they get the Colts. They're at the wow. Colts. And then they got the Bills again at home. So this little stretch right here for this New England it for them. Yeah. will determine if wow. they're going to. Yeah. I mean, if and if they win, say, two out of three, they probably win the division. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Because I think I do think and I'm going to this is forecasting a bit ahead without injury, you know, whatever takes place in the next three weeks. But I think they're going to split with the Bills. They're each going to win their home game. So that'll be a wash and it's going to take I think the Colts game is going to be vital for them. Because uh, then after that, they got the Jags, the Dolphins, into a round of the season. So those are two winnable wow. games. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you now we're getting into December football, and this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where it gets really, really exciting. So, but uh, this week, uh, and again, it could go the other way, but I think you're right, and, and I'm with you. Josh Allen has to win this game, has to. I, I agree. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, that's it. We only have one different. I have the Jets, you have the Eagles. <laughs> And that barn burner of a classic. You gotta put his prayers on the on the Jets. Let's see. <laughs> and me, who've never got who has never gotten the Eagles right. <laughs> I don't get them right either. Well, you're all the other one. <laughs> Every time I take them, they lose, and when I bet against them, they yeah. win. So. Except for oh, I take it back. Last week I got them right for once. I, I had them. I had them last week, and they and, <laughs> and Jalen Rager. Them. If he just catches that ball, I win. That was like right there. I, I don't be rookies. So real quick before we wrap this thing up, I do have the uh, the playoff picture here. Uh, you know what? I later I think it was either the day or after we did last week. I went back into the NFL and I and I still saw the squiggly line, and it still wasn't like giving me the playoff scenario. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, weird. <laughs> yeah, so we got it here this week. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so the Ravens and the Cardinals have hung on to their uh, top seeds, and there they are. Those New England Patriots slide Jeez. into number two. <laughs> rising up <laughs> it says rising up underneath them uh packers are at number two uh titans and bucks fall uh the titans fall to number three titans yep. um i think the bucks titans were, are in I, think, I think the cowboys were weren't they at number three and then they i don't know maybe yeah uh no it says cowboys no change okay then it was already cowboys right. at four chiefs no change at four bengals no change at five rams no change at five and then we get to the bottom spots we have the bills and the Chargers have swapped spots, and then the Forty Niners. Washington snuck in there, and Washington up four spots. Wow, four spots. A one week makes a difference to grab that last spot. And then on the bubble, we've got uh, look at the Broncos now. <laughs> the Broncos there. The Broncos Jeez. have slid up to the yeah. The Broncos have slid up to the number eight. How are the Colts and the Browns that far down? Wow. That's all it takes. Is it, it, It's so close now that one loss can knock you or one win. And the win. Saints and the Eagles, I feel they should be up now, yeah, but they're not. Right. I mean, the Falcons jumped three spots up to nine. Carolina, oh. Carolina's gone. They dropped yep. down to two. Yep. And, and Washington, with one win, jumped four spots. Yeah. So that's how close those middling teams are. Yep. All these six and fives and five and fives and seven and fours. And it's just, you're just going to keep doing this. Um, then the Steelers dropped four spots down to 12 now. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's always fun to take a look at this stuff and see where it might end up. But the uh, Dolphins and the Steelers will fight it out for 12th or 13th place or whatever. <laughs> The Dolphins will the Dolphins will probably go past the Steelers. I think the Jets will go past the Steelers. Uh. Trust me, <laughs> they're not good. Been telling yeah, I like year. I like seeing these teams shuffle around. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. All right, that's it for me. You got anything else? Oh, that's it. Uh, uh, that Monday night, yeah, come sooner. <laughs> Actually, I have I do have one thing. I just want to say. Uh, let me quickly find it. Um, that Rashim Green from the Seattle Seahawks made one of the best plays I've ever seen. Oh, blocking the extra point, scooping it up and scoring. That is that, that is was amazing. awesome. That was awesome. So uh, way to go, Rashim Green. Got to give credit where credit's due. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, and our, and our new viewer is Cliff Kingsbury. That's, uh, I don't oh, know why we're drawing a blank on that. Yeah, I mean, we know the the Seahawks offense and defense kind of stinks well, but their special teams, they got somebody there. Maybe I need an extra coffee before we do this next time. <laughs> I I totally forgot what that. I should probably have a layout here with all the. the I major, usually you know. I can I got it all, but it's. I know, but I don't. I know I don't. <laughs> Just you, the brain farts when we try to squeeze these in quickly and get yeah. them done because we have a small window and that's yeah, that. So. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. I know. So. I know. And right. thank you to all the people out there who keep going, where'd you guys go? When are you coming back to streaming? And uh, we appreciate it, but we barely have time to do this. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope, I hope we do. I hope we do have more time in the future. I, the future. I maybe around the holidays and into January, um, uh, can do a couple more things. I know we want to do our Dune thing. So, yep. Yep. So I was uh, excited about that. It's been cray cray. It's been a cray cray autumn. That's for sure really has so but thank you all for continuing to support our channel um as we drip stuff out <laughs> and work toward the future so again you can find us on the socials at geek time net uh we have uh, everything we have has now been mirrored to rumble so if you don't like what youtube is doing you can go join us over there everything will be there and um i think that's it for me thank you for sending that's in your me. comments and and whatnot and uh the Boston Sports Group, uh, good luck with your picks. <laughs> hey, it's, it's crunch time in the NFL. Let's see. It is crunch time in the NFL. So, All right. Enjoy week 13. We'll see you back here for week 14 next week. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up below. Also, please subscribe to Geek Time TV. It really helps us grow the channel. And make sure you hit that bell icon in order to receive notifications every time we drop new content here. You can also check us out on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at GeekTimeNet. Thanks again for watching. We will see you soon. Hey kids, what time is that?